Hi, and welcome back to another episode of Leaving the Farm right here on Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com. And we're also simulcasting right on TammyPepperman.org on No Borders Radio, as well as Tiranosaur in Ireland. We are a listener-supported radio station. Well, if you'd like to donate, please visit us at www.freedomslips.com and click on our support pages. Every little bit helps. This has been a wild and crazy week. Um, I was so exhausted by Thursday. I'm sure many were irritated by the show. But then Thursday afternoon, Thursday evening, Friday morning, and Friday night, I had absolute renewed hope. Of course, I did the interview and everything with Clint Richardson last night on Corporation Nation, and we delved into what Nazi Germany was, what Nazi Germany is, and how this all stems from Rome and sits in the United States Senate and the United States House of Representatives, otherwise known as Congress or your transgressor. These are interesting days as everything is revealed. Hillary Clinton was called out as a pedophile this week. It was very beautiful to see, although it was very sad. As at one time, as an attorney, of course, she was known to prey on children. And one of the children now is an adult and realizing the game. Hillary Clinton, of course, protected a pedophile, ensured that it had a light sentence so it could go on and prey on other children, and acted as Satan to identify what she is by her own works and actions. That is the mark of the beast. Later, as everybody knows, Hillary Clinton became the Secretary of State for the United States Incorporated. She was there as the clearinghouse, discharging congressional bankruptcy, as a trained adversary to mankind. These revelations will be coming faster and faster as time goes by, and you will see this happen more often as humanity wakes up. This is the awakening. This is the apocalypse to bring forth from a hidden state. The metaphor of Jesus, of course, refers to you, the listener. Barabbas has always been the son of the master, or Satan. Some other god, demigod, that does not have humanity in its in its eyes or in its heart. It has humanity by the pocket. that thing, the mechanisms used by it are called law, and the concepts designed by it, of course, are called ideas and science, and what is presented to you through the media. Those concepts, they all stem from the tree of knowledge. Tree of knowledge, of course, if you eat of it, it allows you to experience death. If your body is gone and you are only energy, you never experience death. But if you are a living shell or a vessel, and you could be filled up with many, many concepts, constitutional theories, and ideas. Your form can experience death, civil death. Civil death, of course, is designed and provided to you by the attorney. It's a legal concept. That thing is your adversary. It is Satan as defined. 
Once you're able to realize this book, you, the lamb, it says you get mad. You start holding the Lord God accountable. You start holding Satan accountable for these things. As it is marked, and it appears before you in all its evidence glory. Such as Hillary Clinton preying on a 12-year-old child as an attorney. Or Senator Farnham evidencing that he doesn't like older children to prey on. He likes them real young, between six and nine, according to his own hand and his own word. This is revelation, that is evidence of who is preying on you. It's not going to go away, it's not going to break, it's not going to alter or change. It's right in front of your eyes who Satan is. It's right there. You can kick and scream all you want, you can be mad at me. I, I realize that you're going to be upset. I'm taking away your daddy. You're going to be grieving these things. We've all been indoctrinated. At one time, I was indoctrinated just as much as anybody else out there. I was an absolute patriot. My grandfather having served in war, my father being a Vietnam veteran. I really wanted to be the president when I grew up. That's disgusting. <laughs> that thing is just clergy for Congress. I don't know where to start or where to go from here. Um, leaving the farm was created to allow you to use your own discernment if you do not know what it is and if you do not see the contrast of these things you're never able to realize there can never be a revelation and I've spent so much time I don't know where to go from here um, you know I've delved into every aspect of the fourth generation asymmetrical uh, warfare upon you the action of hearts and minds winning hearts and minds the descriptive introduction of the silent weapon guarantee insurance what a judge is what a real Tory is what an attorney is agents how to determine if they're an agent or law enforcement. I don't know, I probably sound callous tonight. I don't know where to go. Um, you know, it's, it's like coming to an end. It's, it's a question. Are you going to continue to patronize it? Or are you going to patronize your own house? Take up that cross and protect Jesus. And that's the bottom line now. Um, throughout time, we've given you all of the keys, all of the evidenced knowledge, relative knowledge, and many, many, many examples. And, you know, I'm, I'm posting them up on TammyPepperman.org again. Uh, to make it easier to search for this information by subject or title or tagline, whatever you want to say. But I feel like I've been talking forever. And I'm really not a talker. I'm, I enjoy relativity and things like that. And it, it does say that in 1 Corinthians 13. It says that ultimately all tongues cease. And I, I'll be glad in this 
all this noise, constant noise, it's so noisy. I don't like noise. I like to experience nature in a relative state. And um, it's just been profound. One of the recent posts today um, I was doing, I was reminding everybody about the interview with Otis, Otis Davidson. Um, he was from and around Detroit, Michigan. And in October, um, right here on Leaving the Farm, you know, I interviewed Otis. And he went through everything that he has experienced at the other end of fourth generation warfare as a business. And he showed everybody what the bankruptcy of Flint, Michigan actually is. They raise the businesses. These attorneys, they go out, they start charging people, they start doing all of these things within the action of fourth generation warfare. They raise everything to the ground so that they can rebuild it again. Now, all of you business owners, you're still patronizing this thing. You're still paying it taxes. You're still doing all of these things in patriotism. But you're next. They, they raise you up for a short amount of time and, and allow you to have a title. But they're waiting for you to amass a fortune so that they can take it. That's how the attorney survives. It is a leech, a bloodsucker, a vampire. The canons in the original text of the Bible, the, the Old Testament, the manifest, but they put canons in there and then take them out and then call it a new religion. That's the attorneys doing that. That's a, That allows you a timed release. So, for example, everybody's blaming the Jews for having money right now. Well, in the Torah, they put the story of Lilith. So they showed everybody the psychopathic female and how seducive she is, how seductive, how vile and malicious. So the Jew was warned about her, the psychopathic female. They didn't marry him. However, they're just holding on to assets until the attorneys get there in another variant. Tax evasion, child protection services, adult protection services. The Jew will be raised, it's just in a different way. And it's slower because they want you to view the Jew as something of your enemy. That's a, that's a means of separation, classification. But it is always controlled by the attorneys through the silent weapon. Feminism, environmentalism, all of these things are political tools. And a machine, those are mechanisms. The attorney just gives you some time to build up wealth, um, environmentalism, agrarian economics. They started all this way back when. Finally, at the Constitution, they said, oh, you can't have your own land. Then they do the Soldiers and Sailors Act and promise veterans more land. Well, then in 1974, they started coming in with the Reclamation Acts and taking all that back. But it looks charitable. It looks really charitable because they're saying, oh, we need to protect that, that land for this reason. We need to protect that river for this reason. We need to protect that thing for this reason. And they're slowly taking it away from you and out of your hands again. But it looks really nice. They're doing it under the guise of protection. This is human husbandry. It's human farming. And the concept is that they say they own all the land and then you rent it from them, including each other. When you get a marriage license, you're renting the female from the state. When you take up these concepts of birth control and everything else, you're producing or non-producing for the state. You're making puppies. It's a puppy mill. You've just been given titles to tell you that you're something different other than a puppy. Because in those titles, they create another commercial unit. 
if you call yourself one thing, you're defending that title in court. Or you're defending that title in a hospital or a psychological industry. They sell you all of those products. So the poppy mail really looks special. It looks so sweet. But it's the same poppy mail. Nobody's better than any other. And the attorneys are all treating you as equal slaves to them. They just let the, quote, elite ones build and amass a fortune before they raise it. As you've seen over and over again. Jeannie Kasem just got raised. They held her husband hostage by medical industry. Carrie Kasem just got raised. They held her dad hostage by the medical industry using her as Judas. But she still got raised. She lost her ass. And at the same time, her dad was murdered. This is what happens to everybody. They use each of these tools. Environmentalism, specifically, is used to dis destroy, destroy, and redistribute corporations. That's the opposite end of corporatism. Corporatism raises the individual, or individualism. Corporations come in, they get hot, better rights than human beings. 14th Amendment, ring a bell, person. So corporations were given life over the human being in the 14th Amendment. Well, environmental, environmentalism comes in and redistributes to corporations. So you're not so freaking special, are you? Absolutely not. And these attorneys are selling you carbon credits and saying that you're more special than the human being, but you're the one that's paying money to attorneys But you think that you are something special because the same attorney sold you the titles. And every one of you are stock options. There's not one of you who isn't a slave on this farm. other than attorneys. As I said, you know, you've... I don't know. Why are you so mad? <laughs> I get that a lot. Okay, you're not hearing. This is you I'm talking about. This is you I'm talking to. Are you having a bad day, Tammy? You bet your ass. Humanity's driving itself right over the edge of the cliff as any other lemming. Any other lemming. There's no difference. You've got a really pretty Pied Piper that owns the Bro Broadcasting Board of Governors, and you're following it. And it's selling you and pitching you all sorts of stuff. Feminism, masculism, environmentalism, corporatism, Catholicism, Judaism, Zionism, Islamism, Sikhism, Hinduism, racism, sexism. It's got all these pretty things that it's selling you. It's killing you. I'm witness to these things. And in this, I'm sorrow filled. It doesn't feel nice. All of the sheep, all they just dope up while they're being killed. And take all of these prescription medications and go away. They don't even think about these things. Watching Simpsons, Family Guy, Bugs Bunny.
But it's you who's being slaughtered. And that's why I'm upset. I'm watching you as you're slaughtered. I do not like this place. It's very, very painful. So we did two shows back to back last night, and it was just hectic. Um, yeah. <laughs> Crazy stuff. So as we're going along, um, lots, tons and tons of stuff has happened in the last week. Um, of course, uh, we will share these things as it goes along. Um, let's see here. There's several news items I wanted to cover uh, because of what's going on. There's a businessman being raised. It looks like um, Indiana. From the Indy. No, oh, that's not good. Sorry about that, folks. Advertisements. From the IndyChannel.com, FBI raids Johnson County home and business. This guy is. Franklin, Indiana. Federal investigators raided the home and office of a Johnson County business owner on Thursday as part of an investigation into the safety of his products. Agents spent several hours Thursday at Complete Hydraulic Services in Franklin where they interviewed several employees before removing computers and boxes full of records. Call 6 investigation, uh, Rafael Sanchez learned that the target of the investigation is a business owner, Randy Brown. For several months, the Call 6 team has received tips that Brown has misled customers and altered hydraulic vehicle lifts. Sources said people working underneath vehicles held by the lifts could be crushed because the lifts can't hold the promised weight. Nobody's been harmed. The lifts were allegedly tampered with because Brown ran into financial problems and did not have the right parts. Oh, how did that happen, FBI? That part's not in there. How did he fall on hard times? Corporate counsel, you have anything to say about this? Now this poor guy is being raised by attorneys. If anybody is in that area, Please forward his, my information to him or his information to me so that we can deal with these things accordingly. He's the business owner of Complete Hydraulic Services. And let's see, I don't see the name in here. So we'll update this as we go along, but... Um, I would like to see this come through the United States court and um, lift some of that weight on his shoulders there because he's being raised. CNN today was scaring the heck out of human beings. Can you inherit your dead parents' debts? Well, I'll tell you right now, no. You're not responsible for sins of the father unless your father is Satan. Corruption of blood. That's always been the ruling theme there. 
on that one, and it is absolutely specific to the public law. This process was designed to stop the interpleader from having access to your estate before you could come in as the heir. So we shifted the presumption of death to the presumption of life, and the attorney, judge, bankers, and all of these other fictional characters must prove that they are not fictions. They have the burden of evidencing that they are not fictions and that they are not acting under acts of commerce or private acts. And until that time, they are accountable for the onslaught upon humanity. Of course, the word attorney is a fiction. The action of being an attorney evidences that one is Satan. It's kind of hard to get out of that one, Barabbas. Dailymail.co.uk is uh, reporting today that a renowned army general who slept with women subordinates is demoted to colonel and loses $2,831 a month from his pension. The attorneys are raising this army general. Now, if you're like me, that's the guy with the gun. And I wouldn't want to steal $2,831 a month from him because when he wakes up, he's going to tear you a new one. I'll read part of the story. The army is reducing the rank of a brigadier general, which is unlawful under the rules of war, at the center of a sexual misconduct case by two grads, grades for his pending retirement. In a rare move that will slash his benefits and force him to retire as a lieutenant colonel. Army Secretary John McHugh announced the decision Friday, saying that Brigadier General Jeffrey A. Sinclair displayed a pattern of inappropriate and at times illegal behavior, both while serving as a Brigadier General and as a colonel. I don't see any charges for criminal activity. I don't see a crime has been committed. I don't see a harm has been perpetrated against a human being. The attorneys are raising this Brigadier General. Oh. They've harmed another soldier. Also from the DailyMail.co.uk today, a proud Marine and volunteer firefighter who was barred from wearing military uniform at his high school graduation is killed by a roadside bomb in Afghanistan. He was a baby. He was 19 years old. patronizing this thing that kills 19 year old babies to protect fractional reserve banking and charges underage drinking cashing in on your children's activities My heart goes out to this family. From investmentwatchblog.com there's some sick stuff going on today. Court allows FBI to torture Americans abroad. Amir Mishal alleged he was a d detained without due process and tortured by the FBI while traveling in Africa. He was held for about four months, questioned 30 times, and then just released 80 pounds lighter without so much as an apology. 
They see all you advertises itself after that and says hey we're not the same attorneys cashing in on all this stuff that happens to you doing the stuff to you so come on over here to this side puts on a new hat you see how you of course was created by Congress it's the same federal arms of the FBI that was used to torture human beings to get what it wants, hardballing under action of fourth generation warfare. It looks like they're doing this for charitable purposes. That's what it says happens in Matthew 27. Priests and the elders, the corporations. They were building pauper cemeteries as they were crucifying Christ. Of course, Governor Pilate there, what does he do? He washes his hands in holy water and says, oh, I'm not guilty of this thing. You see to it that I'm not held guilty of this thing. So they put in part the United Way Catholic Charities and all of these programs that are listed on Forbes as very, very lucrative businesses. As it tells you, it's a good guy. But it shows you it must be the good guy because it's got lots of pretty stuff. It's not the good guy. It's It's raising you. This is genocide. This is absolute genocide. Alex Jones is dogging on in immigrants, dogging on human beings again, labeling them. You know, because you're not supposed to love everybody. That's not what God said, right? Love thy neighbor. Alex Jones says, no, we don't want to love everybody. We want to love this guy, and this guy, and this guy, and this guy, and this guy. But not that one. Not that one. Not that one, that one, that one, that one, or that one either. He's an agent. He's a vicious agent. They killed Nancy Schaefer. Go look into that one. Why they killed her. Who she had thought was her friend. And I've been through this walk. For the last umpteen years here. I've been learning who my friends are. And to save you a whole bunch of times, I've been screwed over until the last two years because I changed my friends list. <laughs> We're all seeking each other. We're seeking companionship and friendship and buddies and groups. That's not relative. We're clan-like. We love each other, but we end up finding each other based on frequency. We don't find each other because we're holding out trinkets giving each other things or saving each other that's another one under the doctrine of chivalry they've indoctrinated you to save each other so then you have victims out there that are pretending to be victims and that's how you end up picking up an agent they're tricky that's what it is it's a test use your own discernment he said You cannot see them. You cannot evidence them. 
if you do not know what it looks like. You have to experience some of these things. And what I set out to do long, long ago is to prevent you from having to do that. How about you just look and see it from my eyes. I can show you example after example after example after evidence after evidence after evidence. Otis Davidson, Joseph Reynolds, Sonia Marie, Rocco. You are witnessing the evidence of genocide in variants. That thing, it's a criminal enterprise. And if you're still patronizing it, you're just as complicit as it is. You are paying for it to exist. You are giving it things. You are giving it money to exist. You are giving it your energy. It exists. Stop. Stop making it bigger. Stop these things. Get away from the thing that's hurting you. I don't know how to say that in another way to make you hear me if you don't hear me. <coughs> Excuse me. This is insane. You know, where do we go from here? I know where I am, I know where I'm going. But if you're still patronizing that thing, it can do whatever it wants to you because you're giving it the energy to do so. If it wants you in fear, it puts you in fear because it knows you're watching television programming. It dictates your moods. It'll have a run of sad television programming. It'll have a run of happy television programming. It'll have a, a run of attorneys are good television programming and it'll have a run of, of BI is really good television programming and investigations are needed television programming you know you got these special 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 investigators only they can investigate crimes evidence really doesn't exist according to the attorney you see it in front of your eyes it needs not an investigation. It is already done. These things are already done. Stop falling back onto cognitive dissonance. Let me go back over there because um, I'm getting a report. I don't see the link. Um, and a Craigslist ad posted about 17 days ago. Our federal government is looking for crisis actors for July 4th through July 6th. Quote, we are looking for crisis actors for a government emergency drill between July 4th and the 6th. Actors will be responsible for portraying different emergency scenarios in a simulated government terror drill. No experience is needed. Confidentiality agreements are required. Pay is $200. Please message for details. This is on the Houston Craigslist. Now, the last time we saw that, an advertisement for that, the actor ended up being the Fort Hood shooter that was killed. He thought he was simulating an emergency, and he wasn't. He was the victim of a CIA presentation. CIA wanted any old human off the street. They're hunting. He was acting. And they killed him to put on a very good show to the sheeple that they would believe to put them into fear. So that the same attorneys that killed that man would cash in on the back end. Thousands of times over. You believe each other are terrorists instead of the attorneys in your backyard. They're preying on your children. 
This is Satan. Not satanic. They are Satan, your adversary. That was also at investmentwatchblog.com. Sorry about that. I didn't have the um, thing. Hmm. Yeah, they're trying to uh, decrease risk here uh, from the RP. Some scientists are raising concerns over the U.S. Department of Defense Minerva Research Initiative. The goal is for academics and other scientists to study the dynamics of civil unrest along with the Department of Defense. They want to know what they need to do to advertise to humanity, and they're looking for people to help them study it. They're saying, all the sheeple are getting jittery. We need some risk management here. So we'd like to commission a study as to the dynamics of civil unrest along with how they feel about the Department of Defense. Call me up. Let me know how you feel about the Department of Defense. The RAND Corporation, the same RAND Corporation that, uh, along with McNally, edits your school books. The same one that's teaching you to rely on it, to patronize the Department of Defense. Oh my god, I'm scared. The sky is falling. The sky is falling. The sky is falling. Alex Jones, the sky is falling. From the Chicago Tribune.com, at least six Illinois, hospital, Illinois hospitals are at risk of having their Medicare payments docked this fall. The governor's toughest effort yet to crack down on un unnecessary infections and other patient injuries, federal courts show. They're cracking down on each other, slapping each other's hands. Now, if you don't stop doing that, I'm going to find you and pocket that money. It's the same attorney. It's the same bank. Do you feel protected? That's what this test is all about. Does this make you feel comfortable and warm? Do you believe that the attorneys are going to help you, or are they raising you in a different way? I want to see Barabbas and get more. I want to see Barabbas waterboarded. And all of his assets taken by legal process. I want his house burned down. I want his family to turn on him. Pray for him to die. And at the very end, I want to play with him like a yo-yo. Offer him hearts and minds. Tell him, oh, honey. And I've got a united way over there, but you don't qualify. You make too much money. No, oh, we've probably got another program or effort for you. You might not qualify, but we can we can try. We can try to ease some of this burden off of your shoulder before you off yourself, or we do it for you. They have maintained humanity in a perpetual war zone, war theater, since the beginning of politics. Which is what it said in the genocide order. The United States judge found them guilty by the evidence of genocide and human trafficking using psychological warfare against humanity through the media broadcasting Board of Governors 
tricking human beings out through the World Intellectual Property Organization. As they took up titles. Cannon County teacher arrested by TBI agents for allegedly selling drugs. This is from WGNSRadio.com. Tennessee Bureau of Investigation has arrested and charged a Cannon County High School teacher accused of illegally purchasing and distributing prescription drugs. In recent weeks, TBI special agents, along with investigators from the Cannon County Sheriff's Office, began investigating Shannon Gannon during the course of the investigation. Agents developed information revealing Gannon was buying and distributing prescription narcotics. Whether any of the transactions happen at the school or involve students remains part of the open TBI investigation. Agents arrested Gannon without incident and charged him with conspiracy to deliver Schedule II prescription narcotics. At the time of his release, the 41-year-old was being held at the county, Cannon County Jail on $5,000 bond. Pot's one thing, but I'd like to see more evidence of what he was actually distributing, which narcotics and to whom. From SavannahNow.com, Effington, Effingham prison guard arrested for obscene messages to girl. A Sylvania man who is an Effingham County prison guard has been arrested and accused of sending obscene messages to a teenage girl on the internet. Troy Bonahan, 45, was arrested Monday and charged with obscene internet contact with a child felony, according to Effingham County Sheriff's Office spokesman David Isanapur. Bohanan was a sergeant at the prison, but his employment was terminated June 15th, Effingham officials said. The arrest stemmed from a complaint by a Scriven County resident in April, according to Scriven County Sheriff's Office spokesman Brett Dickerson. Arsanapur said the grandparent of an underage child became aware that Bohannon was contacting the child inappropriately in person and eventually online. The Effingham County Sheriff's Office Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force investigated the case. A task force member posed as a girl on her social media account. Arsanapur said investigation Tors said Bohannon sent a number of obscene messages to what he thought was a teenage girl over several weeks. Dickerson said the teenage girl behaved appropriately. Quote, the child did nothing wrong, he said. Rush uh, Hudsinki Ciro, Effingham Human Resources Director, said Friday that Bohannon was terminated on June 15th for failing to report to work three times, essentially a job abandonment. Interesting. I'll have to keep abreast of that one and make sure that he's not a fall guy for somebody else. Oh, sorry about that, folks. Trying to load these things. More than one million Iraqis have fled their homes as ISIS continues armed siege. This is from CNN.com. This, of course, is the United States Congress sending in the CIA. This is the CIA, FBI, doesn't matter what kind of thing they're calling themselves, the extremists, the underwear bombers, they're all written. The CIA said they were the underwear bombers. The FBI said we're the extremists. You go all the way back to Al-Qaeda and what it was originally, it was a CIA group. These things you've got to open your mind because these people are vicious hunters of human beings. They're trying to garner your support. From the dailycamera.com, Sam Carter ordered to stay away from cops. 
FDA judge in Mapleton Elk trial over unspecified concern. Ex-cop who killed Mapleton Elk jailed on suspicion of driving without a license. Acting on concerns from prosecutors, a judge this week ordered Sam Carter, the ex-cop convicted of killing the Mapleton Elk, be barred from having weapons and stay away from Boulder police, DAs, witnesses, and the judge who presided over his trial. Okay, so they're rolling on this guy. He must have been real close to retirement. And uh, they're trying to raise it. Let's see here. Yeah. So they're going after this officer. They've got him restrained. They've shut up his ability to uh, evidence the attorneys, corporate counsel, and the judge for what they are. This cop is being used as a fall guy. Everybody needs to gather around him. This looks like it's in Boulder, Colorado. Please stand up on behalf of your fellow human being. Attorneys protect elk for their own benefit. That was not their elk in the beginning. Caesar took all of your animals that were on your habitat and they shut up the kingdom of heaven by calling everything theirs under Malthusian theory which is the nature of rent by T.R. Malthus. This was signed and put into play with the Lend-Lease Agreement this time. First time it was with the agrarian law. This one's with the Lend-Lease Agreement. You can follow that all the way back to the Preservation Acts Reclamation Acts, uh, 1790 Patent Act, because they own the word elk and deer. Um, it's, it's human husbandry. Everybody needs to stop crucifying each other based on the misbelief that the attorney's a good guy and he's saving something. They're not saving anything. They're penalizing a human being for hunting Caesar's elk. Hello. I just I want to play like Pink Floyd right now or something. Is there anybody out there? Just not if you can hear me. <laughs> My goodness, there's some. Um, so much on CNN. They're crucifying all over. Um, the Pope excommunicates Italian mobsters. Oh, that's not what Congress is. We want to turn the attention over there to mob-like rule again, like we did in the 1920s, 1930s, 1940s. That's what established this need for the CIA and FBI, by the way. You guys bought into it. Oh, what was that... Uh, the, the one that they uh, put in prison and gave him syphilis. Um, I can't remember his name right now, but he was working for the Anheuser-Busch running booze. Anheuser-Busch the corporation. Same corporation that sits on the Board of Governors at the Association of Corporate Council. Same corporate governance ruling over you. And at that time, they called that guy a, a mobster, said he murdered people, blah, 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 put him in a prison in Florida and took all of his stuff. Because he had amassed a fortune that was in competition with Anheuser-Busch at that time. So Anheuser-Busch took him out. For the life of me, I can't remember his name. There was just a cartoon a while back talking about this, too. Um, it's just sick. These things are, are just sick because it happens every day over and over again. And nobody's waking up. They use, you know, people in the military way back at the Tuskegee experiments. They were dosing everybody with anthrax prior to the 1970s. It says that in the anthrax hearings of 1999. It says you were all being dosed with anthrax. 
That's why this new version of Anthrax, H1N1 and H1N5, is not killing as they expected. You built up an immunity because you've been exposed to Anthrax at least one other time in your lifetime. That's what Congress does. It commissions things to occur against you and says that they're for your own benefit. We're just, we're just studying a new vaccine for anthrax. Yeah. Is that what you were doing at the bu bubonic plague? And the black plague? And at the swine flu and the bird flu? Uh, the bubonic plague and the black plague. They didn't dose the populace before that with anthrax. They had just now found it. That it occurs naturally in sheep carcasses. And so when they used that, it did have the effect of death as they wanted. But because... They've been trying to decrease the population since 1947. They went into failure because they thought they could do it over and over and over again. That produces immunity. A human being adapts to those kind of poisons. They have now two kidneys. All of these different organs that were not necessary before the poisoning started. These are adaptations, and human beings are quite resilient to the onslaught of these attorneys. One of these days, the attorneys will learn this and realize that they are now on the short end of the stick. They're going after a soccer star, Hope uh, Solo. They've arrested him, I see on the headlines at CNN. Cops say Solo looked drunk and upset. Conlin, wrongly jailed for IRA strike, dies. Of course, the Irish Republican Army was a CIA creation. These things have always been used to off humanity in some way, shape, or form while they blame others for it. Secret ISIS video taken from Iraq. Of course, you've got one CIA agent on the other end of the camera, and you have another one running the camera. Isn't that the way that it always went way back to Japan and Vietnam? I mean, you want people to see these presentations, right? These secret uh, kind of videos that we keep coming up with. Secret ones. Secret, they say. <laughs> Donnie would say you fell down and hit your head. My goodness. It's like going from the production of the Titanic to the production of Flomey the Squirrel. Just doesn't compare, does it? They used to be able to get one over on humanity. They used to be able to sell them all sorts of these things and get away with it. It looks like it's not going to be occurring much longer because people are not believing in these things any longer. CBSnews.com Judge in Illinois double murder suspect statements are admissible. Judge on Thursday ruled that statements a man accused in the grisly murders of two Juliet, Juliet Illinois men allegedly made to police without an attorney present, present may be used against him. Let's see. Man, Miner's attorney, Leah Norbert, argued in court Thursday that Miner's alleged statements to police about the murder should be suppressed because he was not provided an attorney. Let's see. I don't see. Um, 
Prosecutors last month dropped a first-degree murder charge against Elisa Mazzaro, 20, in exchange for her pleading guilty to lesser charges of robbery and concealing a homicide. She was sentenced to 10 years in prison and agreed to testify against the three other defendants. Adam Landerman, 20, and Bethany McKee, 19, are also charged with murder stemming from the killings. It looks like... Um, I paid off the female, but, um, hmm. well, we'll see how this one goes. We'll update as we get uh, information in. I, uh, suppressing evidence and allowing evidence is the practice of law. The practice of law is actually unlawful under the public law. Evidence is evidence. If there's evidence of a murder, there's evidence of a murder. If there's absolutely no evidence of a murder, there's absolutely no evidence of a murder. A statement doesn't do anything. Words out of the mouth do not show anything unless it's absolute. And this is ridiculous that these games are played. CranesNewYork.com ex-Goldman programmer gets evidence thrown out. A judge ruled that Sergei Alinikov, the former Goldman Sachs programmer who was accused of stealing high-frequency trading code on his last day of work, should not have been arrested and some of the FBI's evidence can't be used against him. Former Goldman Sachs group computer programmer accused of stealing thousands of lines of high-frequency trading code on his last day of work shouldn't have been arrested, and some of FBI's evidence can't be used against him under a judge's ruling. Sergei Alinikov, a naturalized U.S. citizen born in Russia, is accused of trying to steal the source code, which enables high-speed trades. Mr. Alinikov is charged in state court after his federal conviction was overturned. New York Supreme Court Justice Ronald Dweebo in Manhattan Friday ruled that Mr. Alinikov's arrest on July 3, 2009, and a subsequent search of his home were presumptively unreasonable. Physical evidence seized after Mr. Alinikov's arrest can't be used at his trial, Judge Sweeble said. No! He knows I've been sleeping with kids! Or he's got video of me molesting babies or smoking crack. We can't use that evidence against him. That's the action of an attorney protecting his own interests. And of course, the suit itself is funny because it involves the intellectual property rights. Who has the right to high-speed trading? Those rights, those royalties, belong to the United States, lower case. United States Incorporated is a bankrupt corporation. It cannot be maintaining revenue or interest on any property of the former United States Incorporated because they are bankrupt and they owe their creditors. Of course, they came in as the trustee over their own bankruptcy at one point. Sorry, folks, that one did not fly and they were found guilty in November of genocide against the human populace based on that funny, funny, funny idea that they had in 1933. These things are not, I mean, this is just absolutely amazing that this can still be occurring. And that they would evidence this in the media. It's just it's profound. How stupid are you? You're evidencing that you're maintaining royalties on products that do not belong to you. Using your own media. This is like a death nail in your coffin. Sad. Somebody really doesn't like you. 
Otherwise, they wouldn't put the evidence of your criminal behavior in the mainstream media. Do you get where I'm going here? I try to talk about political cannibalism, and it's just not working out. You continue to stand there like turkeys looking up at the rain and drowning because the water goes down your throat and you don't have the sense to look away. Look away! Look away! Things are just insane. I think I've got a collar. No? No, never mind. Hello! Hi! Right. Hey! I thought so. Sorry. How are you? Like getting your show today. But I did hear the last half hour or so, and, uh, well, so what's going on, um, with, uh, attorney work product doctrine? Those last two stories seems like, um, that was hitting the nail on the head with, uh, how these buggers operate. I, I put up a clip from, uh, the public law last night on Hillary Clinton, how, you know, she started out with attorney work product doctrine, continuing to this day. Right, that's all they do. It's their function. Uh, they hide evidence, shuffle it off of the court record. They do everything in their power because they're the criminal enterprise to tamper with witnesses, to tamper with evidence. That's their function as attorneys. They do nothing but that since 1938 with uh, stare diseases. Before that, they, 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 they allowed somewhat of a game. But uh, they realize that they're not uh, able to compete with the human intellect. Unless they have a, a good way to get one over on the human beings, they usually lose. Yeah. Well, and, pe and people are just paying to have attorneys rake them over the coals and try to tell this to people over and over again. But they are so just ungodly brainwash I'm coming to find that uh, it's just it's, it's like uh, uh, you know going up against a brick wall as the old metaphor goes you know right it is they've been so indoctrinated to believe that attorneys are there to represent them they, they are they're calling you something else they're, they're, they're tricking you out they're making money on whatever's generated on those titles in representation. Negotiorum gestio is the name of the court process, and the negotiorum gestor is the name of the attorney in Black Saw Dictionary. They're court gestures. They're dancing at the behest of their king. Yeah, which is a good lead-in for the video... I just watched earlier today uh, by the old Marine One. I believe it was called This Is My Flag. Okay, and this guy is a patriot. And I, seriously, folks, I don't know who's more dangerous here Congress or the Patriots. Because the Patriots are heavily brainwashed into thinking that they're going against the status quo but they're falling right into it that's the problem okay so he points at the flag and he says this is my flag if you don't like it get out of my country uh, this is the flag of the United States of America uh, I'll die for this flag he says right. he'll die for a concept yes for the United States Incorporated uh, the United States of America aka the Confederacy, as it was described as the style Chain in the con Articles of Confederation. Right. All it is is congressional actions. It's not a location. That flag is used in piracy. It's a symbol of a pirate having captured everybody that looks up towards that thing. Exactly. Those stars in that blue field represent the states of being that have been captured behind bars in the red, white, and blue stripes. It's strikingly similar to the reported earlier versions of the flag 
or the East India Trading Company, because it is, which, this is all who trafficked uh, slaves. Right. And this is all in commerce and navigation, and you can read it in their own writing in all of their uh, treaties regarding commerce and navigation. You can write it, read it in the Congressional Acts that were in the dictionary hypothetical theoretical of commerce and, and practical of commerce and navigation. All of these things are written in Congress's own hands, saying that they're pirates. And I'm sorry that he fell for it, was a Marine, thought he was serving this country when in reality he was serving the corporate interest of the United States Incorporated in their genocidal human trafficking banking schematic. But that's the way it is. And it's global since before World War II, 1941, Atlantic Charter. All right. So that tells you that uh, Hitler and uh, Mussolini, uh, these people had banking obligations to, you know, basically... Uh, negotiate their human beings and their quote-unquote countries to offset the um, congressional bankruptcy. And that's what you're being patriotic to. I'm sorry, but this is the grim facts. Oh, gosh, what else did he say about that? But, I mean, you know, just saying that, you know, if you don't love this flag, you're not American, um, concepts within concepts right and that's the indoctrination of patriotism through the educational system education is handed down by an owner of a farm it's just like any other dog teaching it with a shock collar uh, which would be relative to law enforcement or being tased by law enforcement um, it's relative to the cattle prod they control the inflation rate, so you're always prodded along into consuming products that they make cheaper. And that's what kills you off faster. That's what fourth generation warfare is. It's, it's very, very quiet. And it's maintained by the same Stasi that maintained in Nazi Germany. The Stasi agents were adult protection, child protection, social services, Department of Social and Health Services, Internal Revenue Service, FBI, CIA, our Stasi maintaining state security, national security. And here you have the National Security Act of 1947. It lays it all out for you. National Security Council, CIA, new military working for national government, how it's maintained. And it was really just a refining of the mechanism because they had all these basic things going on before the National Security Act. But I mean, I mean, we'll just go back to 1777 again when they wrote the Articles of Confederation, Article 12. Okay, the the people were just pledges to them, uh, ruling oligarchs calling themselves the founding fathers which was really just a group of attorneys say hey we're here to help you yep so we'll do we're that your that transgressors way. I mean we'll call ourselves Congress and sounds nicer and it said that right in all of their documentation they came in to represent you they're here to represent you people do not want to hear the definition of independence they're down this patriotic black hole and if you look at the etymology, it says not opposite of dependent. All right. And, um, you know, again, it's, it's right there in front of your eyes. N, D, and D mm -hmm. means of pendence. In a pending state. You've been declared civilly dead. Your body's not dead yet. You've been declared civilly dead. 
They've killed you. And at the point that you were killed, they seceded all of your estates by secession. They took them over. Because you're dead. You're gone, you're missing. So they're holding on to your estate, your money, your land. Because you're dead. They're being nice to you. That's why you're charged and pledged to discharge a congressional bankruptcy. That's why you're all prostitutes. That's an attorney being nice. It's nice for the attorney. Fills up their pockets nicely. While it tricks out humanity and perpetrates genocide against him. It kills him off when human beings become overhead. We watched that with Bo's mother. That was all evidenced in audios, uh, on documents, since last year, February through November. We documented it day after day, week after week. And then within not even a month, we documented Joseph Reynolds being murdered the same way. And we come to find out that the deadly cocktail for lethal injection is the same garbage that they've been given these people at the end of life care. I'm sure uh, Casey Kasem got his doses of it in his final hours and the leading the up. They were dosing him to keep him comfortable. And they sell that to the sheeple to say that they're keeping you comfortable. Those are lethal injections. He would not have died. Had he not gotten a diagnosis last year from the doctors and been placed on prescription medication that led him, drove him to his death. He was murdered by Congress, by doctors and attorneys working at the behest of Congress. Yeah, I mean, our beloved Casey Kasem and a, and a judge, you people are going to let a judge decree by omnipotent rule with a gavel and a rubber stamp that Casey Kasem must be removed from the feeding tube and water and he must die because on the back end he's getting in their way the attorney's way of redistributing his estate which they desperately need to do now that their funding is drying up and they're preying on his widow. Everybody needs to hear this. Jean is a widow. They made her a widow so that they could prey on her. She's a human being. Humanity needs to wrap her up in their collective arms and make sure that she is not preyed on by the attorney, which is their intent. They just murdered her other half. And who are the lap dogs for the attorneys? Now also the fall guys as the heat is building for these things that are kindly called lawyers. Of which of course Hillary Clinton was one, Barack Obama was one, so many of your Congress critters and senators and state representatives that you vote for all came from the legal industry. Okay? That's that uh, fictitious government called the bar that they pledge an oath to. All right. And we see attorneys throwing the police under the bus like never before with all of this exposure coming out. You think this exposure is just coming out by accident now at these final days? of this crumbling empire which is the remnants and the rebirth of Rome since the uh, Charter of Westphalia 1648 here over at uh, policemisconduct.net the San Diego Police Department enforced an unwritten policy that encouraged police misconduct and led to scandals involving former Officer Anthony Aravalos, Arav Aravalos, 
and Christopher Hayes, a new lawsuit against the department alleges. The lawsuit claims officers felt they could get away with such inappropriate behavior after former SDPD Chief William Lansdowne and other officials disbanded the anti-corrupt unit called the Professional Standards Unit, PSU, around 2003. Okay, who do you think these other officials are? Right. Uh, I saw that one, and they're trying to sell that program, but that program was actually protecting them. That's what the FBI stands there. They stand there as a military for the federal state. And so they're trying to say, oh, it's because that program's gone that there's so much uh, predation now, so much corruption. But the, the program, it was maintained by the same FBI that reported this year that they're the ones that put child porn on people's computers, phones, and everything else. And they were the internal CIA operations that allowed them to get away with the corruption. So it's interesting to read that one. Uh, I saw that one a little bit ago, and... It was interesting to see how they're selling that and saying, telling the sheeple, well, now you're going to be raised. Now there's so much corruption and there's just nothing we can do about it because, you know, if somebody closed down that department, what the heck? Could the corruption went away? Did it disappear when you closed down the pro program? No. They're trying to sell you that. It's a concept. These are the same corporate council attorneys pitting everybody against each other so nobody sees the corporate council attorneys behind the scenes directing policy. The elimination of the PSU, the special unit, was a signal and affirmation to the SDPD, its police officers, and its supervisory officials that those policy officers who choose chose to exploit their positions of power, authority, and trust by victimizing members of the very community they had sworn to protect could not be investigated, prosecuted, pursued, or punished for their actions, the lawsuit reads. Now, who puts it in their minds that they can get away with these things in the first place? Right. Who writes the policy that's handed down to the police chief that hands it down to his army, essentially, of privateers, under the letter of marquee and reprisal, under your beloved Constitution, Article 1, Section 8, Clause 11, letters of mark and reprisal, which turns a pirate into a privateer because he's got a special letter from this government that says right. as long as he gives a portion of his booty back to the state, well, he can go on and murder, maim, and do whatever he needs to do to collect revenue. Right, but originally the, the contract with the Treasury included privateers, because they're a good thing if they're not harassing humanity. They're a good thing if they're not operating under private acts and acts of commerce, right. which is found under 27 CFR 72.11 right. in today's legal mechanism right. created by the attorneys, right. for the attorneys, Absolutely. But, against the human being. Right. But originally that was part of the contract with the Treasury. And that would be fine if that's operated under the public law, but it's not. It is now on our side. We've been seeing a lot of action through this court, and we'll be able to divulge that information, I, I am assuming, by next week. But um, privateers are not a bad thing if they're, if they're appropriate privateers and they're working for the Word of God. I guess that's the important point that we need to delineate between is whether or not the privateer is operating under private acts and acts of commerce or the public law. But if he's operating under the public law, his first rule of thumb is to do no harm. Absolutely. But his responsibility is to remove harm from humanity. Absolutely. And it's not the human beings that are driving with uh, expired tags that are harm against humanity, they're a harm against the revenue stream of the attorneys under that 27 CFR 72.11. Right. That's why they are preyed upon by policy created by attorneys right. and handed down to cops right. that just want to get their paychecks. Right. And they're told that the cops are told that that is law. They don't know any better. Because the judges and the attorneys, judges, a judge 
ruled that Casey Kasem should be murdered by starvation recently. And everybody bought that because the judge handed it out. But he just murdered somebody. It was taken on face value that he was a judge so he knows what he's doing. Yeah, he really knows how to kill human beings. Back to that 2000 article from ABC News. Cops were hired with a IQ under 110. Something like that. And that's been the policy ever since. Right. In order to manipulate them. Okay. That's why I have a quote somewhere from a police officer. It's not my job to know the law, just to enforce it. Right. Okay. Well, with six million codes and statutes, how many laws do you think cops actually retain under private acts and acts of commerce? However... Under the public law, you don't need a very high Q at all to comprehend, do no harm. Uh, I just finished with this one out, I guess. As an example, the court document claims another officer reported to his supervisors that Aravalos had taken Polaroid pictures of a nude, mentally disabled woman taunting her to pose in a lewd manner with his baton yeah. instead of punishing Aravalos, or reporting the incident up the chain of command, a lawsuit claims his superiors instead destroyed the pictures and evidence of the incident and intimidated the officer who had reported it. Right, which we watched play out with Dorner. Officer Dorner did the same thing. Dorner went up against corporate counsel attorneys and the FBI, and ultimately they burned him alive in that cabin. They, they go after officers if they tell on each other. Well, they made sure that he was dead, dead, dead because Absolutely. he had something on them that we'll probably never know exactly what now. Well, we do. He was making reports to the internal system and saying, look, there's a whole bunch of corruption going on. And that is the internal system that went after him. That's why they had that program there in place. The FBI stands there in place and says, well, cops, you need to, you need to report these things to us. The FBI is your enemy. They work on behalf of the federal state. That's why the attorneys made darn sure that FBI has jurisdiction over all the uh, county sheriff's police, etc. Right. Exactly. Whether it says that in their statute or not, there's a workaround for the FBI Absolutely. to domineer over the whole Absolutely. schematic. And then the president came in uh, a few years ago and said Interpol had full on ju jurisdiction. Without the... Um, prompting of any warrant of any kind and that was another means of shutting up the kingdom so now who do you report to well you don't report to anybody if you're law enforcement under the united states court the public law you don't report to anybody you just arrest people based on the evidence of a crime occurring against humanity the there's no investigation there's no program there's no going to an attorney to say hey look can i arrest is it good to arrest him right now? We don't want to go outside of PR. No, there's none of that crap left. Under the public law, if you view a crime occurring, you are obligated to stop the crime from occurring against humanity. The lawsuit says the alleged cover-up is part of a long-standing unwritten SDPD policy that encouraged a two-tiered system of justice. The system includes laws... I put laws in quotation marks that apply to ordinary citizens and a set of privileges and immunities that apply to SDPD officers and other members of the law enforcement community, according to the suit. Additionally, the SDPD is accused of instituting a process that prevented the public from lodging complaints against officers directly with the Internal Affairs Unit. Right, so there's three of them there. There's this FBI investigative unit and there's another internal affairs FBI investigative unit and you want to go through them why so that the attorney can kill you if you get wind of the attorney's involvement in a criminal enterprise and that's why Jesus said don't speak your intent if you see a crime occurring arrest the criminal come through the United States court I'll stand here they can sue me all they want to do not speak your intent. Don't 
report criminal activity to an attorney or an internal affairs or another FBI agent because they work on behalf of the federal state. They don't want to be held accountable. And we watched in horror as they chased and then gunned and then burned down Officer Dorner when he went up against them. It's right and the media fell right in line demon and I demonizing like he's uh some sort of uh domestic terrorist uh public enemy number one no, and never. he was the the only thing he was the enemy number one of was the federal state status quo and the attorneys all running that system oh for god's sakes no we can't let him find out what we do the people might rise up But I don't know. People are so indoctrinated through their school systems, uh, doped up on fluoride, fed to them through the water and food. And of course, this is all brought to you by the attorneys in Washington, D.C. Okay. Why do they allow genetically modified organisms to prevail lawsuits against Monsanto go nowhere but when Monsanto comes after you because their product cross-pollinated with yours on your property uh, that's a crime now in their attorney world they're saying they own everything. It's the same attorneys that own Monsanto that are the United States Incorporated. Yeah, they're all one league. Look at the word league. Okay? It's akin to the word confederacy, which is a criminal enterprise. That's the League of Nations, and now it's called the United Nations. Which was created through an act of Congress. And that each nation, each foreign state, is a county as well. And Where they're right counting right. human beings. But the Patriot still thinks this is a good form of government. It's good that we have our children willing to throw themselves on the bayonets of our enemies for that red, white, and blue flag. You know, what is uh, the saying by Jesus about... Uh, this kind of idolatry. Call no man your father, not even Christ. Jesus didn't walk with a flag. He didn't say the Pledge of Allegiance. He, he only worshipped God, the human. And he didn't have a black costume on it that had a badge. He didn't have an attorney suit with a tie and a briefcase. These are all different costumes and faces of the confederacy all this idolatry right in front of your eyes and people are sold that it's a good thing it's a good the military uniforms are a good thing to have slapping that flag everywhere on these uniforms just sick it's terrifying and and, and and you know seeing people like the old marine saying that he would die for a flag no wonder we're in so much trouble and the Patriots are hard hard headed I can tell them this stuff over and over again it's like well, that Constitution is what gives us our sovereignty. No, Constitution is something that you've been filled up with like a load of crap. Okay, and it's all basically comes down to that Commerce Clause. Before that, you were the pledge and the private acts and acts of commerce that they're engaging in is negotiating you, the human being, as a negotiable instrument. 
That's your form of governance. That's what you're being patriotic to. To being a hypothecated instrument. Okay? And if you don't know what hy hypothecated means, it just means essentially leveraged out. Uh, uh, what's a good way to explain that? You're, Turned into a fiction, hypothesized. And you're doing it yourself because you're subscribing to these things. Right, to the fiction. If you say you're an individual, that's a hypothecation of the real you, that, the relative you. Now, let's see. I have a story over here at thechieftain.com. Uh, the Pueblo Chieftain. Pueblo defense attorney charged in fatal hit and run. Okay, now we're talking. All right. Unfortunately, these other attorneys are still cashing in on this commercial crime stuff, even by attorneys. They're feeding off of each other right now, like piranha. But humanity's not getting any of these funds back yet, which is still a problem. However, Going on with this story, the 11th Judicial District Attorney's Office has filed a felony charge against Pueblo Defense Attorney for her alleged involvement in a deadly hit-and-run accident from March. District Attorney Tom Ledeau said his office was charged, has charged Christy Marlett with accessory to leaving the scene of an accident involving death, a felony, and false reporting a misdemeanor. Marlett has not been arrested. Nadal, whose office is serving as a special prosecutor in the case, said Marlett has been ordered to appear before Pueblo District Judge William Alexander on July 28 to answer the charges. Marlett's husband, Victor Montour, 31, is facing a charge of leaving the scene of an accident causing death. Police believe he was at the wheel of Marlett's white Jaguar on March 11th when he sped around a line of stop traffic at the intersection of Hollywood Drive and Ivywood Lane lost control of the vehicle and crashed it through the lower floor of a home at the northeast corner of the intersection killing Johnny Hagerman 46 and injuring his wife Johnny Hagerman who died because of a rogue, lawless attorney. Okay? Attorneys are the last individuals to follow any law. Whether it be their own private acts and acts of commerce or particularly the public law. They don't care. They've always enjoyed that immunity under that escape clause that Lincoln came out uh, with or came out under his administration uh, three days before the 14th Amendment, see, where the uh, Expatriation Act was put into play. Well, that was for the attorneys so they could escape and be uh, immune to these prosecutions as they have been for so very long. According to the Montour's arrest affidavit, Marlett suggested to police the car was stolen after officers came to her home to question her and Montour about the vehicle. Officers said it appeared Marlett and Montour were coaching each other during the conversation. According to the affidavit, police, uh, police also obtained surveillance video from Walmart that shows Montour getting into the vehicle and driving off. More video shows him buying a can of compressed air. The same brand was found in the basement of the Hagerman home, police said. Montour is serving a year-long jail sentence after admitting to a probation violation connected to a separate DUI in October. He also is being held in jail on $500,000 bail for the March 11th incident. Okay? So, what have we learned from this little story here, kiddies? Uh, Tabby, what do you hope that people would walk away 
from that story with. So the attorney is Barabbas, and if you don't hold the murderer accountable, this continues on and on and on and on and on and on. I know. That's why it's crazy, you know, going against all these patriots who are facilitating this perpetuality of this attorney work product doctrine. You know, and these attorneys have gotten away with this stuff for so long. It wasn't until late last year that uh, we swapped the surety for the human beings, which was unlawful in its face, for the attorney and fictions and judges and corporations. Psychopaths. As per the, uh, yeah. Probably. Well, they're all psychopaths. But, but for the, uh, the agreed entry that came out of the uh, court case with Northern Holding Corporation, because... It had always been human beings since 1929 that were held in the holding companies to be the backing of this debt-based currency, attorney money, that the attorney sold you down the river on in the first place. <sighs> Over at News Channel 4, K4.com, video vigilante exposing metro prostitution asked why local attorneys not charged. Okay, yes, we've been covering this one here because this is important to understand how, uh, what you were talking about in the first hour, how not only uh, are you renting the state's property when you uh, uh, get a marriage license, but how uh, you're uh, charged for rent on your own body. Okay, Oklahoma City, a metro attorney allegedly caught soliciting a prostitute for sex more than a year ago was still not facing any charges. William Nixon of Love, Beale, and Nixon was arrested in May of 2013 along with six others. Nixon allegedly responded to an ad set up by Oklahoma City Vice offering sex at a local hotel. Oklahoma Bureau of Narcotics became involved after allegations of human trafficking surfaced. A local activist website revealing men who solicit for sex files do not let this matter be swept under the rug. The self-proclaimed video vigilante Brian Bates of JohnTV.com follows the results of the sting and many others. This is not a difficult case. It's not hard. Uh, it's not a hard case to prosecute, says Bates. There's no reason why a year and a few months later he has still not been charged. Hello, he's an attorney, okay? One by one, every suspect was charged, except Nixon. And the other suspects were just patronizing a prostitute and undercutting the federal government because the prostitute was making money on her own body. And the federal government got mad because they say they're the only ones that can trick her out. Yeah, and then people wonder why I use the term the king. As in, um, oh, I still get uh, stupid shoe comments on this video about the, uh, you know, man uh, uh, shot on King's Land or how did that one go? Now it's been several months, but it ties in with the King's bankruptcy, which is another video we put out that has basically everything you need to know about this enslavement mechanism in it. And, uh, you know, these shoe comments are like, well, what do you mean, the king? Well, you're, well, you're being facetious, right? Or, no, they came in pretending to be the king. Yeah, they exactly. Said Congress said, hey, we're the king. Yeah, they they act, if it looks like a king, acts like a king, and you call it the king, well, it's the king. Well, it's a demigod is what it is. It's the Lord God because it's not actually the relative king. Humanity is. God is the king. Yeah, but they're patronizing. The wrong one that king right. they're given power and energy to that right and instead of standing up and holding accountable they're down there well i'm gonna be a good patriot and i'm gonna okay. go i'm gonna go vote some good congress in yeah every time they speak the word citizen the citizen that word is defined in black's law maintaining that you are a subject to a constitution so citizen just replace that word with subject yeah and, and then you'll realize what the fee is, what the fiefdom is, what this kingdom that was created by Congress is. You are a subject in Congress's house, the House of Representatives. 
All right, so you try to <laughs> blast the rest of this new Channel 4 stop by Love, Beal, and Nixon, but was told Nixon is out of town. There is an awful lot of lip service going on regarding the cases, Bates. I don't know why. None of it smells right. No, it smells like attorney. After years of work, Bates says he noticed a disturbing pattern. Blind justice does not exist in Oklahoma City or Oklahoma County, says Bates. Well, Bates, you need to expand it out to the rest of the globe because it's the same thing, only different everywhere. If you're an attorney, if you're wealthy, if you're someone that's well-known in the community, there's a really good chance you're never going to be criminally charged, and that isn't fair. Duh! They can come up with whatever excuses they want, but I track all of these cases, and I don't see the blue-collar worker who made a mistake having his charges go away. No, of course not. You see guys in jail for life for marijuana, for something that grows out of the ground that the attorney said that you can't have because they claimed ownership of it. Yeah, it undercuts their uh, revenue stream. 27 CFR 72.11, it says right there, that you're undercutting the federal government if you're doing these things by yourself. If you're selling your own body, if you perpetrate the crime of kidnapping under 27 CFR, Congress is saying you're undercutting them. They're the they're the ones with the rule or handle on that business. They're the only ones that say they can kidnap and prostitute people and sell drugs. Ain't that the truth? Nixon's charge packet has been back and forth between the Oklahoma Bureau of Narcotics and the District Attorney David Prater's office. Prater. How do you like that name? Prater. Yeah, Pray Prater. Like Prater. Yeah. Uh, Bates says he's been told different things many different times and just wants an answer. Initially, I was told he'd be charged within 10 days, says Bates. Then I was told he'd be charged by the end of the month. Then I was told that he'd be charged... Any time the charges were imminent. It's been 14 months after he was arrested, and the charges haven't been filed. We've never seen this before, now have we? No. No, no. How many months ago did I lay down that indictment for uh, Michael Dvorak in uh, St. Joe County, Indiana? Yeah. It's still no action there. No, no, we can't, you know, hold our own accountable. That would be preposterous. Is that one slick attorney, Scott? Yeah, they thought they'd get out Summers. of that by by cannibalizing um, the district or assistant prosecuting attorney. Remember the one that was peeing? Yeah, in just recently, uh, he was uh, picked up in uh, Ohio on uh, drug charges. Um, they said he was peeing. Yeah, in just happened to come across him when he was uh, peeing outside. Uh, and, uh, you know, probable cause and found a bunch of um, narcotics and stuff. That they planted on him. With the back and forth aside, Bates says his case sends a bigger message. Under the eyes of the law in Oklahoma County, we're not all equal, says Bates. If you live in a nicer house, if you have a nicer job, if you have better connections with the city, or in other words, the daddy state, he's saying, you're not going to be held to the same standards that everybody else is. Oklahoma Bureau of Narcotics says all seven charges, all seven charge packets were handed to the district attorney's office at the same time. But Nixon's needed extra work, he yes, said. We that, gotta, we gotta you know, lose some pictures and lose some evidence, and then we'll get back to you. It is now in the, uh, back in the hands of OBN, the DA's office, and is still waiting. Spokesman with the OBN says the charges were imminent, and the district attorney should be seeing them any day now. Yeah. Hold on, we gotta lose some pictures and some evidence, and we gotta manufacture some police reports. Maybe and we gotta you'll forget them. about this case, and Absolutely. we'll just throw it away because you know he's one of us. Yep. And we gotta have our confederacy sticking together because that's how we roll. Right. We're a criminal enterprise. What you gonna do about it? We got the cops that follow our policy. They love them private acts and acts of commerce, as you can see by their works in action. You know? Absolutely. It's corruption. Politics. I can't seem to reach these patriots, though. They just, they just think the Constitution is the greatest thing in sliced bread. Well, ask yourself one question. This is the... One thing I 
I try to instill upon my listeners all the time. Who gave them the authority to take those rights in the first ten amendments or the rewrite of the Bill of Rights? Who gave them the authority to take them from you in the first place in order that they could sell them back to you with interest? Okay? What, what is it that you don't get here about that? I never needed to be granted a right to free speech before their Constitution and Bill of Rights and all their attorney papers. All right? We don't need constitutional sheriffs. We don't need a constitution. We just need everybody to adhere to public law. We need sheriffs to be what they were intended to be, which was a steward for humanity. And the sheriffs only need to adhere to public law. That is it. Now over here at ABC News, ex-Utah detective charged with manslaughter. Utah prosecutors on Thursday charged a former police officer from a troubled department with fatally shooting an unarmed 21-year-old woman during a 2012 drug investigation. Okay, so this woman was shot while a policy enforcement officer was once again enforcing commercial crimes crimes against the revenue of the federal state that's right the federal state will shoot you in the head when you cross them with their revenue stream Salt Lake City sorry Salt Lake County District Attorney Sam Gill announced at a news conference Thursday morning that a single count of manslaughter had been filed against Sean Colley, 33, a former narcotics officer in West Valley City. Colley and another officer filed at Danielle Willard as she backed her car out of a parking spot. The officers had contended their lives were in danger. But Gill said that's not the case because Colley was standing on the side of the woman's car. All right, these cops are told to say anything. Like, for example, his face was hitting my fist. Okay, and of course the attorneys teach him how to handle all these situations like this. Mr. Colley acted in a reckless manner, and the evidence that we have does not support that this his life was in danger or give him the justification to use the force that he did, Gill said. While Collie and, other, uh, while Collie and the other officer both fired a total of six shots, Gill said, Collie fired the fatal shot and his office didn't have enough evidence to justify charging the other officer. There was one more than the other who started this process. Gill said of the officers. And the corporate counsel attorney that called it out. I want to see that guy charged with murder immediately. In a statement Thursday afternoon, college attorney Lindsay Jarvis called the decision incredibly disappointing and said Colley continues to maintain his innocence. Detective Colley will continue to follow each of his the demands now placed on him by the judicial system until this case is concluded. He looks forward to his day in court, the statement said. Yeah, the like we, we all look forward to our day yeah. in court, right. The attorney's cashing in on the death of this individual, the death of the female, of course, and they're cashing in by charging the person who facilitated what is otherwise known as corporate policy on behalf of the attorney. The attorney's cashing in all the way around. And there's now a dead female, a charged cop, but it was the attorney who called this out. And it's the attorney policy who allows these things to occur. And then they use these cops as fall guys as they're renting everybody's bodies to other attorneys. That's right. Detective or not, which detective usually indicates they're on the federal level and an agent level, which always had them outside 
of uh, being held as a prisoner of war under Geneva Convention Article 2, 1929, right. but now with the uh, uh, surety swap, it's not no longer the case. So this guy, uh, he's got uh, some com uh, common up and uh, coming to him, I believe, for right. uh, killing a human being Absolutely. because he'll be charged under the public law now. Absolutely. And, and this one, you know, he was following policy. They were not in danger. There's no evidence that he was acting in self-defense. However, the attorney that directed him must be charged along with him because the murder was facilitated and promoted by the original corporate counsel attorney that called it out. Jarvis said Collie surrendered at the Salt Lake County Jail Thursday afternoon, was booked and released. Court records show he posted $10,000 bail. At a news conference Thursday afternoon, West Valley City Police Chief Lee Russo said the investigation has been a long and difficult road for the department with support skills investigation. And we'll be back with the Bo and Rocco show on Wednesday, 10 to 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on Revolution Radio. FreedomSlips.com, Studio A. Be well, everybody.